this is Cy. We're in the log cabin today. It's what, week seven or eight of lockdown during the COVID time. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the AMT Ertl uh, models, uh, the, the gigantic series. Um, there's several. There's a huge tarantula diorama. Um, and each kit you get um, a huge tarantula, uh, praying mantis, or there is a, a scorpion. Um, I've got all three in different stages of build. One that I completed a while back, one that I'm doing now, and we'll do an unboxing. So for the last one that I don't have, there's an unboxing. There's people also are talking about uh, a giant Hornet model. Um, I'm sure that's out there somewhere. I've just never seen it for sale, and I've never come across it in real life. I've only ever seen internet pictures. So there is that one as well. So there's, there's three main kits. Something that's worth discussing when it comes to these models is that these are readily available. Um, don't be thinking that 125 quid is is a good price for these. It's not. That's that's an absolute rip off. I paid uh, in 1996 when I bought the first one. Um, I was not very well and I needed something to do in 1996. Um, and I did the tarantula one half of it in 96 and then I finished it off in the beginning of lockdown. And then a few about a month ago, I bought this one for 30 quid on Amazon. Um, and this one, sorry, the other one that's in the box, which we will unbox, um, I paid 25 quid plus a couple of quid postage for this one. We'll unbox that together, see, see, see what the um, praying mantis looks like. So these are not, not particularly rare, they're still readily available, they're, they always come up on eBay, so, so don't feel bad about making them, they're, they are just a bit of fun. What I'll do is I'll take the camera down now and we'll have a quick look around the workshop, we'll quick look where we're up to, um, we'll do the unboxing, and then we'll see how we go. So I do love a good unboxing, um, and this is a genuine unboxing. I've just pulled the labels off, just, just so I don't show my address for everyone. This was sent to me from a really nice guy on eBay, and he kind of kept, kept me up to date with when he was posting it, and of course, he went out in his exercise time during lockdown to post it for me. Very grateful for that. And it was good value. Well, I think 25 quid plus postage is fair. Um, seems to be about what they go for. Like I said earlier, don't be paying hundreds of pounds for these because they're really not that rare. Well, well wrapped, waterproofed. Um, he's put it inside another box. So if we then open this up, there we go. This is the final one that I haven't actually ever seen before other than in pictures. Um, there we go. Gigantic's Colossal Mantis Diorama. So there's an interesting thing about these. that I've heard people say they're from the 50s and the 60s. Um, all of the ones I've got... Are, are kind of trademarked and dated 1996, which would tally with when I bought the first one brand new in a shop. Um, I've also heard people say they're from the 70s. Now, I have seen them. Uh, if, if, if you look at the cars, that is a, clearly a 70s Corvette, and the cars do look very 70s. So I, I reckon they're, they're, they were possibly designed in the 70s, but these were a remake in 96. Because these are all stamped 96. So let's get the uh, let's get the cellophane off this. And remember, these are not rare. It doesn't matter. There's loads of them about. I bought this on eBay last week, and it arrived. There's loads of them. It was only 25 quid. So there we go. That's the that's the box. And in here, it's the stuff that we're we're used to seeing. So we've got our instruction sheet, and we have this uh, cardboard cardboard area, and the cardboard area is of a railway track and in the box we are in the bag we're going to have the usual stuff we're used to seeing is the scorpion bits the buildings uh, there's a little train in there that I can see which is rather cool I love the idea of there being a train uh, whether I paint that in UK British rail colours or in uh, American colours I don't know but it looks very interesting on the box what I'll do is I'll as you can see, this is all new in the box. I'll get this one opened up once I finish the scorpion, and then we'll move on to it. And then at the end of the, um, at the end of, as we move through lockdown, I should have finished all of these, and I'll put them all at the end in a video. So let's have a zoom in on that opening because I'm well away; you couldn't see much from there. So let's have a look what's inside if we open it. So take the box open, and here is the diorama part as I said I always attach this onto the backing of, of plywood now if I just grab the tarantula for a second this comes in really handy because if you want to for example have HT line HT leads for the uh, you can 
glue gun them here and hold them on this base. So I just used literally some scrap plywood, just painted the front black, the back, the front black, and there you can see you can stick the buildings to it and it holds it stiff and it means you can stick everything on and have a much better result than if you don't do it. Okay, so that was our background. I'm going to have some instructions and I'm, I'm not one for reading the instructions which I should do more. I tend to sort of blag it and I shouldn't. So that's building the mantis, more building the mantis, showing you how to put the buildings together, stick the head on the mantis. Um, I love the way it says citizens citizenry is that a word citizenry but i love look at this train how cool is that there's a train to make um and is, is there another corvette we'll find out if it's another corvette and you can see here these are the little tricks they give you about making sure that you fold the flaps back so you get the edge of a building it's rather cool it's kind of showing you where it should all go train people car and the general story so let's let's open this bag what's in it so it's the usual stuff so there's our building it's very nice isn't it like that could be some detail in that um, parts of a mantis there's a leg of a mantis more bits oh, this is the cool bit train train carriage Where's the actual train then? There it is, half a train. There's half of the train. There's the other half of the train. And there it all is. So that is a bit more of a, a close-up. There's another bit of building there. Again, there's some nice some nice detail there to paint in on. That, that really is it and of course you've got the obligatory people hopefully not 18 again this time it's a bit of a roof stuck in there with those people yeah it's the same people on all the kits uh, my, my tarantula one I've either lost the people or it just had less people because I've only seemed to have one two three four five six seven eight nine people on the tarantula but 18 on the scorpion and this one has at least there's probably one falling off in the one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so this is in between there seems to be 12 on this one and our cars oh yeah we've got the same sort of 70s American car here and is there a crushed Corvette in here I don't see it at the moment. Maybe there is no crushed Corvette in this one. Oh, there it is. There's our crushed Corvette. So there's our our crushed Corvette, the same as the other model. And you can see the one that I painted. Here is our crushed Corvette for the other model. Um, I've, can't, I've made that an American one with a... There you go. Let's crush Corvette. There we go, that's a slightly more in-depth look at what's in the box. So we're here in the old cabin looking at the uh, Praying Mantis uh, Gigantics build. So what I've done is, uh, what I always do, and I think I said this earlier on, but this is like a recap as I build it. I use this one centimeter, uh, that nearly fell on the floor, this one centimeter plywood uh, to put all my Gigantics on uh, so it holds it rigid, because if you don't have that it won't it won't be still and it'll flop about. So what I generally do is make it out of the plywood, and you can see one I've made here, screw it together, and then I use normal PVA glue just to uh, just to glue it all on. And then, because the way PVA is, if it's not held down when you do it, it will fall off. It needs to be clamped. So I've got loads of clamps and pegs and bits all over this. These Irwin clamps are absolutely brilliant. So there's the Irwin clamp take the bulldog clip off there got a pair of like more grip things there little bits of wood to hold it all together and then this big clamp thing there and there we go you can see we now have a really stable steady flat base that we can start putting our buildings on obviously I need to glue these glue these building sides down and there's a top here because this is all on fire so I need to glue this glue that down and have the fire sticking up as per the instructions and same for this one but yeah that's uh it's looking really good that's all that's all I need 
So here we are on with the Praying Mantis build. What I like to do is get everything ready and then start gluing them together and piecing them ready. So obviously this is now finished. So the building which comes in five parts, one, two, three, four, five, will now fit there. I'll obviously paint it before I attach it, so that's too close. Paint it before I attach it, it fits really nicely there. And we've got the dock, which there was nothing to make, it just needed cutting up. I mean, I'll say that's more of a platform, they might call it a dock, but it's a platform, it goes there. And there's the train carriage, which needed gluing in two. And the Mantis, which is here. And it's odd, this is the first time in making one of these models that I've gone, oh, that's horrible. Because it was kind of a bit creepy crawly. It actually does look a bit too realistic for my like. And that's kind of weird, because a Mantis can't hurt a human. Whereas... Obviously, um, a, a tarantula can do you quite serious harm or kill you if you're unlucky. And a scorpion uh, give you a nasty, nasty sting. Not, not necessarily fatal, but give you a bad sting. But this is the only one where I've just gone, ew, that's too realistic. And had a bit of a reaction to it. But he's now come together. So I guess he will go somewhere like... I want to have that hooked around there. So it's likely I'm going to have him hooking around the building and treading there. And I'm going to have him knocking... We're knocking the train over like that sideways. I can't can't balance it, but it will go like that somehow. So yeah, that's that's ready to go. There's there's some people. There's a railway crossing sign, and there's like a little buffer that goes here for the train to to to, to nudge. So right, that's all the gluing done. Now we need to get on with the painting. So here we are in the log cabin for an update on the giant mantis. So I've done the blocking in on this. So it looks a bit scruffy because it's only blocked in. It's ready to have the inks done and the shading and then I'll do the highlighting after. So you just block all the colours in, in the right colour and then fix any corrections because once the ink's on it's quite difficult. Um, and then things like this that will be silver just don't do at all. Wait till the inks are all on then they can be done. And an example is where I've been working on it here and you can see the little train which I've done in 1970s British Rail colours. And then you can see the little dock here, which I may reshade because I'm not necessarily, it looks a bit dusty. I may, I may re-sand sand the dock. The Mantis is pretty much about as finished as it's gonna get, I think. Um, I've done a little bit of colour on the spiky things. Um, in the, on the box, they, they, they say to use uh, gloss black for the eyes but I've used matte you can see I've tried to pick out the wings there without being too obvious on it so yeah it's there so I'll um I'll come back when I have inked in and finished the little station and we'll see how we go from there 